Well, good morning to you all. It's wonderful to be here with everybody. I think like many of you, I grew up in Toronto, this wonderful multicultural city that we have here. And because of what I do now, I'm more aware than ever of what an incredible global privilege that really is. And I've always been fascinated by different cultures. Some of my earliest memories include, you know, having my first really hot curry over at Manu's house and being yelled at by Gloria's mom for running through the house on pasta making day when pasta was hanging all over the place. And I think that fascination with culture was rooted a little bit in my family story and why I do what I do. You see, I grew up never knowing my father, and I had two siblings, each of whom had different fathers. And now I know that sounds pretty dysfunctional. I don't say that to make anybody uncomfortable. The reason I share that with you is because it was that experience of seeing my mother raise us with a really strong sense of being a close-knit family and having a good self-worth despite all those circumstances that rooted in me and cemented in me the commitment to advocate for people who are powerless or broken regardless of their because of their life circumstances now life being what it is i ended up working in business right up until about six years ago when i received my current assignment and i say assignment because my faith, my Christian faith, influences everything that I do. And I'd been asking God a really important question for me, and that was this. I'm passionate about this sort of thing. I understand that, but what on earth can a marketing and sales type do to help people living in poverty? And the answer came. And the answer was that business is the answer. Poverty is an economic problem. The economy is what distributes wealth. And so by definition, the best tool to engage in eradicating poverty is the economy. And if you'll stick with me, I feel like it's a little bit like digging fence post holes. We have a tool choice. We can dig a fence post hole with a shovel, or we could dig it with an auger. And of course, we're gonna get different results based on the tool that we choose. And I feel like the shovel is like the $133 billion or so that we're able to muster up globally in the fight against poverty. And the auger is like the $69 trillion economy. And what's rooted in the idea of social sourcing at Zoe Alliance is this. It's that we engage the auger by leveraging what companies and people spend each and every day on routine purchases. Now, so for companies, this is really a simple extension of what they're already doing when you think about it. Organizations have programs called corporate social responsibility. And this is an oversimplification, but within corporate social responsibility, most of what happens, happens either in the context of donations or volunteerism. To Im implement the idea of social sourcing, we'd like to see every company add a third pillar that's just as intentional and strategic as the other two. And through that, seek to over time source up to 10% of what we know they're gonna buy anyway from companies that employ people living in poverty or adults with disabilities or other groups. We need an illustration, though, I think. So I'm going to use the corporate gift market just to see what the power of this is economically that we can engage if we do this. In North America, each and every year, we spend $22 billion on gifts. Every year. That's a lot of tchotchkes. <laughs> and so if we actually engage the social sourcing concept in this industry, we would actually redeploy $2.2 billion and turn it into sustainable development and life change. And to continue to illustrate the concept and trickle down and look at what the human impact is that we can achieve through this, I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine. Her name is Darshini. Now, Darshini and I have some similarities. We're both moms. And uh, she's a little bit younger than I am, but her children, Priyanka and Kartik, are very similar in age to my children. And I had the opportunity to spend time with their family in their home and in their community. And when I walked away from that experience, I have to say, you know, you ever have an experience where you walk away and you've got this thing gnawing in your gut that you just can't get rid of? And I did. And the thing that it was was this realization that probably the main reason her life and my life are so different is because of where we were born, something we don't choose. I was born in Canada where, despite my clear lack of pedigree and family income, there were opportunities for me. Darshini was born in Dharmapuri, which if you've ever been to a village, you know there's little to no opportunity to change one's life circumstances without respectful support and intervention. And yet, look at her in this picture. 
Now, she's looking a little shyly up at the camera, but she's usually a little more smiley than this and, and relaxed. And she's, she's happy and she's proud, and she knows that Priyanka and Kartik are in school that day because of earned income and not charity. And that's a significant distinction because what that means is that it's sustainable. They'll be able to continue to go to school because she has income which means that if they work hard on their schoolwork, they can become the teacher and the policeman that they want to be. And then that family's trajectory is changed forever. It was the implementation of the social sourcing concept that made this possible. A little over a month ago, Royal LePage at their conference with 1,300 people handed out bags and pens and conference badge holders that were made by this group. And while they did it, their delegates watched a movie that showed them that the impact of their social sourcing decision for these very routine items led to 15 women working for 40 days and providing for 75 family members. That is social sourcing in action, all the way down. So let me ask you a question. Can you see yourself there? Can you see a way to implement social sourcing either in your life or in your organization? I don't believe any of us think that where we are born should influence our ability to pursue our dreams. So if you're with me, maybe consider different things that you could do. Consider going to talk to the person in your organization that could get social sourcing as part of your CSR agenda going forward. Or what you might purchase in holiday gifts this year or other items that could be sourced from fair trade or other social options. We can get ahead of this problem. We can eradicate poverty if we use the right tool. And the beauty of this idea is its simplicity. We're going to spend this money anyway, and we get to choose where we're going to spend it, don't we? So let's spend it in a way that empowers people for life. Thank you. <laughs>